Tandem Cannon, the Game Freak podcast where color play is canon, and where there's 24 karat magic in the air. Head to toe, so playa. This is episode 47, Black Girl Magic, where we'll talk about black women who run it in video games. This is Tiffany. And this is Mia. Well, let's go straight into the talk from Teen Tandem. So, Mia, what have you been up to for gamer homework? Well, I've been doing a lot <laughs> of Overwatch. Yes! yes! with this Lunar New Year stuff. It's fun. I've gotten some really awesome skins. I've gotten Farah Winston's skin. I mean, it's been fun and I like some of the changes that they've made. You can change the skin before you get deployed out. That's cool. And so this is so much better. And the team comps have been good. I've been testing out newer characters. And so my goal from here on out is to try characters that I'm not as comfortable with and get better with them. I normally default to maybe four or five specific ones every single time and I need to get out of my comfort zone zone. get out of that bubble so especially as people are leveling out and they're restarting with their their stats and stuff so what mm -hmm. character is not currently one of your mains but you want to improve on probably Widowmaker if I could Mm -hmm. or Ana because I like sniping it's just that it's harder in a game like this where everything's so fast moving and especially with Ana because her skills are so specialized and Yeah. yeah it's not like she has like the resurrect ability like Mercy does her mobility is kind of limited too so it's just like man of all the people that I wish could get a little bit more of an oomph I wish it would be Anna but those two for sure and I need to be a better tank overall like I don't feel comfortable being a tank I'm so used to being a support character I like debuffing enemies and stuff and taking people down and I'm more of a long range type of fighter so I don't like being up up close close. personal yeah except the offensive characters where I can sneak in like Sombra so yeah there's that and then I've been playing Sim 4 I was telling (laughs) Tiffany about all these weird ass mods I've installed in my game don't judge me people don't judge because if she's grown the Sims are grown or the adult Sims are grown so Yes. let them do whatever they want to do but it's interesting theory. to see how stuff plays out like Kotaku talked about there's a mod where you can grow sell and do drugs in the game free pharmacist yeah <laughs> yeah like changes the dynamic of your sims you can actually overdose there's lethal and non-lethal overdoses and stuff and it changes how your character can really do the game it, essentially you can get arrested and so there are consequences for your behavior it adds some dimensions to your game because i feel like sim 4 as it is is very vanilla unfortunately and god bless the modding community because really the sims 4 would not be where it is without them because even little tweaks and changes just to make the game more bearable it just makes all the difference in the world so there's that i haven't tried the extreme violence mod my sister showed me there's a serial killer mod an extreme violence mod we were talking about there's one where you can kill your parents and i'm Mm. like that's some fucked up shit i don't want to judge anybody because they're trying to either add more realism to a game or something like that like my sister is recreating the sims 2 characters in her game and using the serial killer mod to kill off some of the characters who are missing like bella goth for example we don't really never know what happens to her and so she's kind of constructed this whole story and stuff and then there are other simmers that i've started following who have focused more of their gameplay on storytelling so they're trying to inject more of the sims 2 style stuff but with the updated patches that Sims 4 has, which is really interesting. So, yeah. What about you, Tiff? Same two things. This Lunar New Year stuff has just been so great. I got May all decked out from her last year's deal, but it's kind of good to go back and actually do pick up both skins from last year and this year and voice lines and stuff. So, out of all the boxes that I've gotten, I just hate, I still get a ton of sprays oh, yeah. out the wazoo and your icon too for your avatar icon. Get a ton of those too. I didn't even get to pick up any of their special skins that came out like a month ago. So, can y'all give me something? But I got Genji skin, Widowmaker skin, which is pretty cool. But other than that, I'm enjoying the gameplay pretty well. They're supposed to be possibly giving another character in the next couple of months. Can't wait. And Destiny, pretty much the same thing. I am almost got my Hunter up to where I complete the base story mission. But I've already done all of the different adventure events. So, hopefully by that time, I can get my character up to be able to do the Curse of Osiris. But she's already on almost at power level 315 so she's probably already high enough but I also like that between all of your different characters on Destiny you can switch weapons so if you 
you have your weapons in your armory or in your vault, you can take those out so that automatically can get your character to level up very quickly. So it's kind of cool to have that little bit of versatility to level up a lot faster. Yeah. So, yeah. That's cool. It's just a great stress reliever, but I do promise that I want to try and play another game the next time we talk to you guys. So We've just been busy, but it's all good because we're still bringing you episodes and that's what matters at the end of the day. Me and Mia are setting out an Overwatch goal for us both to reach like level 100 by the end of March. So hopefully. We're getting there. So in other news, there are rumors, at least as of right now when we're recording, that EA might lose their exclusivity deal with Oops. Star Wars. Whoops. And our petty side is like, it's about fucking time. Low clap. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, if this does come to fruition, who would pick up the mantle of Star Wars and how effective would they be at doing, I guess, what Disney would want in terms of their games and making them as marketable and good. And we were throwing around some different developers. I think we had talked about Ubisoft a little bit. And even though I know we talk a lot of shit about Ubisoft, but it's because we really do care about their games. A lot of their games, yeah. We were noticing how that they have been really making a genuine effort to turn around their titles especially the more recent ones that have come out that maybe they started off with the normal Ubisoft stuff but they've been adding patches and updating things like right. Rainbow Six Siege is far beyond the shadow it was when it first started off. Hopefully the division will kind of get up to that same standard as well. Assassin's Heard, Creed Assassin's too. Creed has been doing well and we've been hearing some things about Ghost Recon Wildlands and really trying to make that franchise viable Ghost Recon is a long time series for them. So even though it didn't really start off strong, Ubisoft is starting to really take stock of what's been happening with their games right. and maybe listening actually to what people have been saying. And so that makes me feel a little bit better that they're making a genuine effort. Assassin's Creed has turned out a lot better than what we thought it would be. I hope this is not a backsliding trend. I hope they don't get to a point where it's like, oh, we did our job. Cool. They get comfortable in their success and then exactly. just want to crank out whatever. Ever. They did maybe one Star Wars game back in the aughts, so they may be able to do it justice. And we had also thought about Rockstar, but we know how Rockstar is very protective of their properties and making sure that everything turns out right, that they're willing to push back lead times in order for them to make the game shine as much as possible. And I don't know if Rockstar will be able to meet the heavy demands of Disney of wanting to get stuff out on a certain time. I can respect them for doing that if they were to skip over or Rockstar was to say no. And I think the creative control element too is another factor too because I don't think Disney would want to be associated with a company that makes games where you can beat up prostitutes. I don't think that's a good look. Even though Rockstar does do amazing games it doesn't really fit with the Disney brand as a whole in their image and parents would probably get up in arms if It was associated with (laughs) Mickey Mouse doing GTA. I would play that shit to be honest. Like why Um, y'all complaining? Y'all still buying that shit at GameStop for them anyway but you know that's, that's another topic. <laughs> I, I mean, about that. also consider the 2K branch. They're like EA and they have a ton of subsidiary developers beneath their umbrella. But it's another group of people I would probably consider since they already have done Disney characters before was probably Square Enix. Yeah. All their games that they have taken out is not of a Final Fantasy. So you have Tomb Raider and you also have Life is Strange. The story mode elements is there if they're willing to bequeath them some elements to get some stuff right. If they can so. stay away from Activision. Yeah. Oh God, Activision trash and we have not really talked about activision mostly because i I think think that time's coming yeah we we try to stay away from their games but they're just as culpable as ea and and ubisoft if not worse honestly Mm because we don't really play call of duty but we know about the fuckery that they do so don't think that they're not exempt (laughs) and we don't know we know it's just that we don't really fuck with their games so right um, even though like call of duty world war ii was a really good redemption for Mm -hmm. what they had before but can y'all space this stuff out y'all are still releasing stuff for like black ops too so yeah it'll be interesting to see if ea does eventually lose this who they will slate for them to take over or if they might take some other small developer in-house and kind of do games themselves don't know disney can afford to practically buy almost everybody right now so that'll be a good lesson for ea especially with anthem 
and various other games really focus on what they already have in house before they go and try and develop anything else. In other news, Sims 4, there is a new skin tone patch that just released a couple weeks ago, and it is designed to create more skin tones, especially for darker skin Sims. So black and brown people of color can feel better represented. The yes. wonderful thing is like, yay, we're finally adding more melanin to the roster. But the bad thing is, it's four years after the fact that this game has launched, and there's been lots of criticism from the Black Sim community, obviously, because of this. They've play tested, and they're like, this is still not at the standard it needs to be. There's a lot of different issues with coloring and textures, especially with hair. And instead of really taking that criticism and being like, oh, let's talk and see how we can improve this, the gurus at Sims on Twitter have not been the most receptive and not. responded with a lot of hostility and more being defensive, which really did not help the situation. And so now they're getting dragged by Black Twitter and it's not mm. a fun experience for them. It's like, really, this is during Black History Month too. Y'all really have no excuse, especially when you have a vibrant Black Simi community that would be more than willing to give you constructive advice on what to do. And, you know, right. you need to involve modders of color in your team to ensure stuff like this doesn't happen anymore. It's another issue overall games need to be more inclusive and developers they need to have more people of color involved it doesn't help that sims from the jump has always been a realm of doing your own creative work no matter what it is that's the reason why it has the reputation of being versatile because you can create your own world however you want and people want to see themselves being represented they had darker skin tones but unfortunately and and i have to agree with them the darker skin tones make your sims look ashy they don't look full of melanin richness like they look ashy they look pale these look like skin tones that were not created with people of color necessarily in mind so simmers especially black simmers have had to rely on mods to get really good quality skin tones in their games there are whole simming communities that do black hairstyles and fashions right they haven't caught up to us Uh uh-uh we're at the end really of the sims development cycle we're almost at the point where sims 5 really could be announced any day to be honest who would want it though that's the thing (laughs) if they're gonna do this shit through sims 4 the response that the gurus gave back was not very good so yeah y'all have some work to do yeah (laughs) but um in other news they're releasing another expansion pack jungle adventures expansion it reminds me of like a cross between legends of the hidden temple and jumanji i kind of want to play this but it it looks like it offers a lot of custom newer foods it's very like south american inspired so you'll see a lot of brazilian south american type of fashions and foods and whatnot that's actually cool it looks Um, fun i'm like that one looks interesting interesting i feel like i would buy that but yeah after the whole response it's like oh Okay, we're going to wait and see what okay. happens. In other news, I'm really excited about this one. Kingdom Hearts 3! The Japanese trailer just got released from D23 in Japan. Oh my gosh. It's coming out in Japan in 2018, which means it should not be that too far behind in either late 2018 or 2019 in North Thank America. God. Oh my god. <laughs> I almost peed my pants because I was like, no, no, no. This can't be real. Y'all are just messing with me. We've been okay. waiting 84 years for the actual numeral three to be behind Kingdom Hearts. I'm like Whitney Houston right now. I'm like, show me the receipts of this thing actually existing. This stuff is pushed back for 10 plus years of development. Until I see like that actual date going to be released, October of 2019, like until I see it, I won't believe it. So. Yeah. And then in other really awesome news, we're we're excited about this one too. THQ Nordic is buying Volition. Go ahead. Go ahead with that. <laughs> This means that there is a potential that Saints Row may come back Mm. and this fills my heart with so much love right now because THQ and Volition had a really good relationship in terms of their early Saints Row games. We talked a lot about the content and how good they were with balancing kind of the silliness with a lot of the good character development that we want and making that gameplay meaningful. So Mm. According to Mr. Saints Godzilla, I think he said, we are getting a new Saints Row game. I don't know if it's going to be reboot of the old series or if we're going to continue with kind of where with Agents of Mayhem left off. It's too early to say, but I feel like this is a really good sign. And Saints Row 3 happened at a time where THQ was going bankrupt. So I think now that things are, especially given the performance of Agents of Mayhem, 
maybe this is a sign that we're going back to the drawing board. We're getting the Saints Row game that we want. Yeah. We'll see what happens, but I was really excited about that, so. It's really nice to hear that they were able to recognize that Deep Silver was up there, like, fucking up their properties. Like, no, we got it, but yeah. but thanks. Yeah. Thanks for watching our dog for us for the weekend. I don't necessarily need, like, the gangster elements of it, but I just need a good Saints Row game with a cohesive story yes. and characters. Like, if y'all can give me that, I don't care if it takes place in space, but I need something that makes sense and is silly but without being obnoxious straddle that line guys now that they have the agents of mayhem storyline have something not necessarily like a crossover but like where it's a continuation of you know that they exist in this world that's been refashioned after johnny came back from hell but it'll be nice to actually see how those two universe exist on one earth exactly. so if they go that route breathe new life into the saints row universe too so we'll see yeah so I think that's all the news that we have. We're probably way out of date on stuff. So as always, we always recommend that you go follow Tweach uh, yes. this week in our collective heads if you want more current news because they're awesome and amazing and Kevin's hair is always amazing. And, yes. Yeah, and they stay up on all the good news, indie games and free games and stuff. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Tiff, are you ready to level up? Hold on. Okay, I found my teacup. Let's do this. Woohoo! Let's level up! So today we are showing some serious love to black women in video games, mainly because there are a lot of black characters in games, but we've noticed especially there are not enough black women that are playable characters who have any sort of agency over their own narrative or story and are not stereotyped or sexualized or all other issues that normally affect women of color as a whole in games. But we really wanted to give them a shout out because black women are awesome. And so one of the things that we noticed especially is... Even though black characters do exist in games, black men usually make up the majority of the characters represented in games. And they do have their own issues of representation and stereotyping. The intersection of both race and gender needs to be discussed because especially black women, we are out here. We are fierce. And there seems to be this sort of misconception that black women don't play games. And I don't know if you've been on Twitter at all. We're in droves. So we are really super overrepresented in games that discuss crime drugs yeah. fighting right. or violence especially anything with gang related type of stuff gta saints row yeah god true crime def jam anything related right. to a rapper like we're in those games but yeah when it comes to actual games that revolve F-F. around good narrative character development we're kind of Not absent <laughs> yeah or sometimes when you do see them they are that npc character that has like two lines so it we can also tell a good story we can be kick-ass in a different element other than that yeah especially when you see a lot of the same tropes that you see in other popular media like movies and tv and where it's allowed angry stereotypical ghetto you see that also applied or on the other end of the spectrum Mm. we are seen as sexual objects it's kind of gross yeah we're we're hyper sexualized or if you do see a black woman most likely they're going to be lighter skin and there are different complications with colorism ambiguous yeah we're gonna make them look as racially ambiguous as possible it's with the assumption that they are either black or part black in some capacity where why don't we have a lot more sure things out Mm -hmm. there and it's interesting because the black women that you do see that get featured in some capacity they're either an antagonist a character you have to fight against or they're a side character that gets killed off or they don't really have very much development so you see a lot of parallels with movies and tv with video games and it's like when we're not being involved in our own narratives and we don't see ourselves being represented this is the treatment that we get and it's kind of shitty actually right character development if we get any is usually related to another character usually white and male but there's ties is never on their own terms. They have to depend on another character in order for them to either exist in this world or for them to be accepted into the story arc, which should be valid on their own terms. I wish that we had more representation. Yeah, and so one of the hugest issues that we also see is just the amount of hate the characters usually get in Mm -hmm. fandom. 
Fandom is not normally nice to people of color in general. There's a lot of issues with colorism, anti-blackness. When you see fan art, nine times out of ten, if you see a darker skinned character, their skin's going to get lightened up. Um, oh, definitely. And definitely. there's so many awful implications with that. But black characters don't get any sort of love at all. If they do get any sort of character development, they get torn down and dehumanized. Like everything that makes them who they are, they get whittled down to either a villain character or there's a lot lot of unnecessary negativity regarding their character like for example i keep thinking of jacob from mass effect who Mm. understandably so his personality is not the most exciting but they are characters who are similar in scope don't get treated with the same amount of venom there are other examples like vivian from dragon age inquisition they don't get any sort of love even when they are nuanced we see with non-black characters especially white characters even their most negative traits and some way are humanized and they're like oh they have this backstory and people are willing to write all sorts of fan fiction about them that's not the hate with black characters if they're painted as a villain in any sort of light they stay and they can be like the sub villain not the ultimate top villain but this person is the epitome lightning rod of hate why are you giving me more hate than you do for them and it's just outrageous how people view characters of color especially black people I think of like Kylo Ren for example Kylo Ren killed one of his own parents he's yeah. a bastard he's an emo asshole yet you still have people lining up shipping to defend the fuck this guy, shipping him even though he is abusive and toxic in so many ways and is not in any shape or form to be in a relationship with anybody and then you have finn he is a flawed character who has had some issues going on but, but he is so hated by the community and you see that stuff reflected also in video games maybe not to the same level because we're not as prevalent in video video games and so that's a different story but it's the same sort of dynamic and it's frustrating when especially as a black person who is very interested in fandoms and you want your characters to be given that sort of same treatment like they have yeah yeah and unfortunately they're just painted as a villain if they have one small speck of anything that's less than perfection they're deemed as a villain and oh my god they're terrible and i won't even get into the whole shipping context of that either and how that works out so those are just some things that we notice about black women in games this is just a short list there's a lot more that we can go into but we want to focus on the positives because you know we're on the tail end of black history month and black women are the shit so we're a little biased but you know coming for what we know and what we don't see that really reigns in the reason why we made this episode to begin with because we don't get that much time we feel a little bit better when we are playing games where we can create our own character but we also wish there were more in existence to where someone else thought of this product and thought that a black woman will be able to carry her own game Mm -hmm. by herself without us creating that exactly Um, black women that own their own shit we don't really get to see and i hope this list in the next five to ten years gets three times as long if not more it would be nice to be able to have a game on the same level as rise of the tomb raider or even yeah. assassin's creed where fans are attracted to the series because of a specific character who just happens to be black and they don't shy away from that aspect of their personality and stuff and give right. them the nuance that they really deserve honestly it would right. be cool to see that so i want see Amanda Shepard that I don't have to create myself. (laughs) Right, right. I'm sure that time is coming. The more people of color that are involved in coding and doing their own game developments to where there are representation out there, but you will wish that there were more main IPs out there that would convey no matter if you are a person of color or if you're a black person, you are still a badass person that does this job and gets it done. So I'm looking forward to that day. I hope it comes sooner than later. I want us to have more characters that we are are proud of and not as seen as like pandering but a genuine right. effort to see people of color represented well in right. a way that humanizes us to other people that may not have a normal day-to-day interaction with people of color if that makes any sense so right. that's all we want so i don't look like me <laughs> i mean outside of just creating the one skin that's on wildlands or any other game or more. dragon age with the, the sand and burnt brownie skin tones that was yeah great. and white parents oh god i have questions like <laughs> Am I adopted? <laughs> My parents should change with me. How are you going different strokes this shit? Come on now. <laughs> Especially like I don't see 
anyone else of my color around this bitch. So, yeah. mom, what did you do? But yeah, let's get into this list because we're excited to talk about some awesome black women. So, I have to give a shout out for Evelyn de Grandpre from Assassin's Creed Liberation. Why is she such a badass character? Because she was the first female assassin that got a game released in the Assassin's Creed universe. Unfortunately, hers was one of those that was not really a main IP, not quite a AAA title. She got a re-release, so it was able to reach more people. But she's such a cool girl, badass woman. She has the smarts enough to go and do things that she knows she needs to to get things done, especially trying to find out the mystery of what happened to her mom, why her stepmom is up there doing shady ass shit. And it doesn't help that also she is a woman born of two different worlds, or technically three if you think about it. Her mom was one of his former slaves or something like that, but I'm glad that they addressed that right. aspect of it and they didn't shy away from that, but right. at the same time, it informs Avalon worldview so much and what she can actually get involved in on a normal scale so she is from new orleans but if she was outside that setting it would be completely different she would not have been portrayed more in a ladylike light if she was outside of new orleans but also i love her versatility in quote unquote proper society to go and get things done as an assassin or as a slave trying to find out what happened to her mom and so she's just great all the way around i just wish her title was a little bit bigger she was also a bridge between her and Connor parallels what Aveline was going through too. Where do you belong? Where do I fit in? This is my country. Right. How are you going to ostracize me from my own country right. and try to label me as a human being and whether or not I deserve respect? So there's right. another dynamic. But they definitely gave both of those the gravity that they needed to. Especially something that's supposed to be historically based on top of that. So who else do you have? I had Braddock from Agents of Mayhem. This girl is such a badass. I love her. But she's a former Marine. So yay but I really like that they gave her her own story arc and her that own backstory thing it with Agents of Mayhem we got a lot more depth than I thought we would get and I was pleasantly surprised she was in charge of her unit many of them actually deflected over to the opposite team Legion and so she feels personally responsible she didn't intend on training them for that but they use their skills and their talents to do bad things and so her story arc is about getting revenge and taking down the people that deflected and are using their powers to disrupt the world and redeeming herself which is really cool and I really do enjoy that they did that and they gave her that sort of nuance. She's a hard ass and she takes no shit and Mm. she's not afraid of getting in their butts when they do something wrong so she internalizes a lot of that stuff and takes that on herself and even though this is sort of a comical game she's one of the more serious characters because of that story arc and how they handled it. It was really cool so there's that. They gave her as much depth as everybody else and she's probably one of the most badass characters in the game. So cool. shout out to Felician. Y'all did that well. So I appreciate that. Awesome. The next one I had on the list was Jackie Briggs from Mortal Kombat X. Just from the last name, you can kind of tell who she's a chip off the block from. So she is the daughter of Jack and she became the first african-american woman to be a part of the franchise after 25 years and so it was good to finally have someone that came into the franchise and also she is a woman of military background she joined cassie cage's special forces group even though her dad did not want to but she's like no i'm in charge of my own destiny dad i got this thanks though glad you care but i'm good do what i want so it goes to show that she's of her own mind do her own thing in life so i think that's really badass i think they had said unfortunately that her moves weren't not necessarily Really generic for their command. They could have done so much better with her moves. So I'm hope that maybe it'll give her a little bit more special skill set that will differentiate her from other competitors. So, yeah. The next person I had to put was Kendall from GTA San Andreas. She rocks yeah. because she's one of the only positive female characters that I've seen in a GTA game honestly, but especially a black female character where she is not afraid to get in CJ's ass when he's fucking up. She's the more center and the voice of reason out of this whole operation and really I feel like if it wasn't for her and for Caesar, CJ might have been in jail a long time ago Yeah, and maybe not have survived the game honestly because she helps them create a legitimate business and get something going. She has a really good head on her shoulders when it comes to business and yeah. getting things started so you know she's trying to do better with her life and I like that she does try to bring CJ into the fold with him and even right. with Caesar 
Caesar's encouragement too. And as their relationship grows, it's one of the healthiest relationships I've seen in a game. She's a very good character and someone who I will defend to the death. So mm-hmm. try me, bitches. She will cut. <laughs> but yeah, good job on, on Rockstar for doing that. Always. Also, we want to give major kudos to Effie Eladele from Overwatch. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she is so stinking cute and smart than anything else. Effie created Orisa, one of the tanks that had recently came onto Overwatch just about a year ago. Absolutely adore Orisa and her versatility. And you can tell Effie put a lot of her quirk within Orisa to where it seems like they're just inseparable. It's like the Iron Giant without the sad ending. Effie is such a great role model for young girls. She's willing to create a robot that is able to fight but also stand up for or Overwatch against the forces of evil. It's an interesting thing that they take this mind of a child to bring back some goodness in the world. With the Overwatch mini movies where you see yeah. children featured, it's like they want to bring back the good. I can't wait to see all of them. Sometimes that's what you need, just a different perspective. Who else do you have? I put Nilin from Remember Me. This is one of those situations where I think she's either biracial, but she's racially ambiguous enough that if you didn't know it, you wouldn't know she was black, honestly. Mm. But she is half black. But I like her a lot because her abilities are fucking cool. She can remix memories. And so if there's a point in time where, kind of like with Life is Strange, where something goes wrong or she's trying to change the outcome of something she can remix a person's memories entirely not just her own one of the best parts about the game is when you get to those specific points and i wish there were more of them but she's also a really badass fighter she can kick so much ass and take names and it's really nice to see a woman as a protagonist of her own game especially a woman of color and a black woman yeah i just wish that she were more explicitly coded as black but i think with the developers they had said that they were worried about the appeal to a wider audience and being able to relate to her and I'm like you just gotta do the damn thing like right they can, but that's another story in itself but I just thought that was really awesome so agree my other pick was Jocelyn Reyes from Tomb Raider from the first rebooted Tomb Raider game and she is not a character you play with or anything like that she's more of like the NPC that happens to be along for the ride she's the engineer as they get shipped right but she really is not here for anything she's more like I'm here to get this paycheck because Rock told me to join this thing, so I'm here for this. She ended up being a NYPD cop, and when her old partner gets killed, she goes after these mofos, pretty much does street justice on them. After she works at this bar, she meets Roth, and they become friends and eventually hook up partners to where she has a daughter by him, and so... Off and on, she would be either mechanic, but she mostly will try and stay behind to raise her daughter. She can do the engineering thing on the Endurance, which I think is so cool. Though such a fleshed out character, but unfortunately, you don't really get to control her. She's a bad bitch. Even for an NPC character, she is just no nonsense and will not put up with any shit. So I wonder, even with this new Tomb Raider that's supposed to be coming out in the next year or so, if she will come back. So mm-hmm. I just wish I had a character like that outside of just NPC world, like an actual playable character that's versatile. Like like that and her own sense of justice cool i guess i had to stay within the gta realm but i also put tanisha hmm. from gta 5 this is franklin's ex-girlfriend and she shows up several times over the course of the story and she's trying to get franklin to get his life together she realizes early on in the game that he keeps talking a big game about wanting to do better with his life but he's not willing to put in the effort mm-hmm. and is trying to get him to grow the fuck up and so she's not here for any of his shit and I did appreciate the fact that she is a darker skin character, which you don't really see a lot in games. And yeah. again, she's also treated, for the most part, with some really good respect by Rockstar. Franklin's storyline as a whole felt very organic, more grounded than the other two. But I like they did include someone who was not maniacal or crazy or bitchy. Yeah. She was just a person that was just tired of his shit and was like, look, you need to either put up or shut up. And right now, you're not doing either. So I'm out. Right. But yeah, she tries to come to terms with his ways and she moves on with her life she finds another man she's happy and she's trying to still remind him of who he is and person that he used to be and franklin just does kind of his own thing so Mm -hmm. yeah i did appreciate that they tried and incorporated that storyline in there and her character so what else did you have to storm 
Storm from the X-Men game and the Marvel vs. Capcom universe. You don't get any more iconic than her. And I remember just watching the cartoons back in the day. There was not a lot of superheroes of color, let alone women of color, and she was one of the first. So just for the simple fact that now you can embody her and pretty much kick ass when you play her on the Marvel superheroes, the mansion, I play Storm as much as possible so I can just do that tornado, just whipping it on people. She's probably like the classiest black woman that I know of. She deserves all the mad respect she isn't getting. I just wish there was more people of color, especially mutant kind, that we can kick ass on Marvel vs. Capcom, but she's amongst the first. That's so true. I think I'm going to skip around and do Michelle Grant from Life is Strange. Mm -hmm. She is one of the first teachers that you meet in the game in the chapter one. She's very caring and concerned with the school and her students. She cares about Max and she's the one that's trying to do the petition to prevent David from doing the crazy cameras. Yeah. And trying not to turn the school into a prison. She really tries to stand up for her students and looks out for their best interest and everything. But it's really cool because she's awesome at math and science. And so you get to see more black women represented in STEM fields. And I really like that she knows so much about the Native American lore of the town. Most importantly, too, Miss Grant is one of the few authority figures at Blackwell that Max does respect or she can respect and seems like a credible person to be around. Whereas some of the other ones, like the principal... Some of her other teachers are not. Worth a damn. Yeah. Miss Grant has a good head on her shoulders and she epitomizes what it means to be a good role model and teacher and mentor. So. Agreed. But who else did you have? Nadine Ross from Uncharted 4 and Uncharted The Lost Legacy. She is essentially a badass. She is the leader of this military company called Shoreline. So she is already a woman that has her shit in order and she is the woman in charge. Unfortunately, she does come across in this section as being a little bit of the antagonist. She also does not value people that either waste her time or lead her wrong because her fuse is short. So you only have a couple of times to double cross her and then she's like, I'm out. I'm about to leave all y'all to die. Her and Nathan Drake come to blows a couple of times over an artifact. After that she goes on to the other side join Chloe Frazier looking for a treasure the reason why you got the Lost Legacy spinoff. But my respect to a woman that's in charge of her own organization and wants to do things on her own time and purpose but you better not piss her off i like her i really need to get through that game one more yeah do one more elena from street fighter 3 the new generation essentially why i had picked her just for her backstory she is such a nature girl and so in tune with doing her capiera also the daughter of a Kenyan tribal leader. All she wants to do is just go abroad and study just like her dad. It takes courage to go outside of what you know to pursue something you really love. I have to give credit for that. So oh, cool. Well, that's all of the characters that we had for right now. I if- hope there's more. I, I hope, hope there's, there's more. And there are yeah. some games that we have not gotten to that we don't really know as much just yet to really vouch for them. But if there's stuff that we've missed, please let us know so we can talk about it for next time. A couple more zombie games. Yeah. yeah. We're overrepresented in the zombie games. If we're ever in a zombie apocalypse, though, like black women got this shit on lock. We're good. We got but- this. So, Tiff, are you ready to move on to the wheel of random tandem? I think I'm ready to spin it. You ready to spin it? Spin this bitch. So, da, 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 for today's Wheel of Random Tandem, Tiffany, what game do you feel like would benefit the most from having a Black female character as a lead? I can't really narrow down the game. I can just narrow down a genre that I would love to see them more in. And that's fantasy. Unfortunately, fantasy genre in general, and this is not even just for video games, people of color, especially black people, are lumped out of that because it's always colored with a white brush to keep the purity of it. We are underrepresented in those elements where I think that we could bring a lot more gravitas to a role if given the chance to. I am full on 80s baby fantasy girl. I love fantasy movies, but I wish that there were more of representation of me in there as much as I am enjoy them because there shouldn't be a world where only a certain cluster of people exist when that world 
could belong to so much more. Fantasy is where anything can exist. Why not black people? Exactly. If it's a fictional universe, there's no excuse why black people would not exist. Would unless not ex- you're just being racist and you pretty, just don't want black people. Pretty much <laughs> genetically like eradicate all of us out. That's not how it goes, especially where you're more accepted to the idea that dragons exist and will burn down your village, but this one black dude or black woman helping you out is so unheard of. I mean, mm-hmm. we can go back and talk about Star Wars with that regards. So that's why I wish we had more of that and not like Dragon Age where characters are created. A good fantasy game where not only are we the lead, but our character is given a positive light that is needed in a time of such darkness. So mm-hmm. I would just love that for the sake of the genre itself. And fantasy embodies everything, so why not that? I agree. So I forgot about Vila from Broken Age. And she's yeah. black. But that was a good fancy element, but I wish there was more. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I couldn't narrow it down, but I would love anything that is story or character driven that would show the nuance and diversity of black people. You know, I kind of mentioned Mass Effect in passing, but something like Life is Strange, because even though I enjoyed Life is Strange for what it was, this was a story that I felt like was not for me, especially in terms of the language and some of the experiences. I was like, yeah, this does not speak to my world experience. Yeah. All. But it would be really cool if from the perspective of a non-black person to actually get a feel for what is it like being black in right. a school where you're the only black person there right. and the the ups and downs of your family life and people saying all sorts of fly ass shit to you when you're just trying to live your life. It's cool that you get the time travel element of that but you got to see Max in her own head thinking about things and the people around her and how they reacted to her. All these inner monologues. It would be cool to hear if Max were a black person, her inner monologue of blackness and performance and it's like okay, right. if I do this, how will I be perceived? Oh, well you know what I should not be running because that will arouse suspicion or right. I should not wear this hoodie inside the store because I don't want them to think I'm stealing. And the amount of self-policing that we have to go through just to make it through the day, like that shit is exhausting. Yeah, On top yeah. of being, you know, a normal teenager that's having to deal with this stuff and having supernatural powers and educated black siblings. One of the more recent episodes talked about blackness and performance and it's Gilbert true. was talking about how he goes through his day and is like I'm going to Whole Foods I want to wear a hoodie because it's cold out and I want to be comfortable but I don't want to be seen as a threat but it's Whole Foods so that whole mental gymnastics that you have to go through to be taken seriously as a person I wish that we would get something similar to that you get to hear those inner monologues not just these actions are happening to me or I'm embroiled in this type of scene but right. you see the day to day aspects of just being a black person that would be really cool so right. I'm sorry Max was so oatmeal. She was yes! so oatmeal. Like <laughs> I think what made it kind of a disconnect was the language. Like they use a lot of AAVE and it's like, this does not sound natural coming out of your mouth. You sound like a 40 ass grown old man who heard some Vine references and then tried to insert this and it sounds awkward. And the voice yeah. actors, they sound awkward because that stuff doesn't come natural. But it would be cool to hear Max and Chloe be embroiled in that culture without making a mockery of it and making it sound weird and I felt like that was part of the reason why I couldn't fully connect with the game this is me just talking off of just playing one episode it's always interesting when you can play a game like this that kind of isolates especially from a teenage standpoint how it feels to be in the life of a teenager but when we're gravitas if it was given over to a black girl to see how her life would be in trying to exceed in a life or society where there's forces that continually block her path so and especially in the school systems where black girls are more likely to be placed on suspension or get in some sort of disciplinary issues because there's a cultural mismatch where especially if you have teachers that are not black and they don't understand black cultural cues and whatnot they will think that oh that girl's being defiant and they're not being productive with the class when really they're just being quiet and keeping mm-hmm. to themselves and not trying to be disrespectful they're just trying to do their own thing so, i had a teacher like that they don't understand that their cultural cues in black culture we think it's disrespectful to call an adult by their first name that's a huge deal that stems back from like jim crow when black people were referred to as boy and girl and not their name or not their title and so right. in black cultures that's a big deal if i ever called my mom by her first name i would I not just- exist 
Yeah. Or to refer to an elder yes. you know, outside of outside their name. Outside their name. Oh, my God. Like, that's the biggest disrespect or looking people in the eye. As a black person, being in a white society is tough when you have people placing their own expectations on you and they don't understand how black people operate or they don't know black people. It's yeah. rough out here for us. Do we have any final thoughts? So y'all know what the drill is, guys. So you need to hit up our Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Tumblr. We're out here. You can also email us at tandemcanon at gmail.com and follow us for all the updates. So do we have any new followers? We have the best video games, retro games, and... Aloha Morn. Totally butchered that one. But they're on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you for following us. We hope we don't scare you away, but we make no promises at this rate. For commenters, we have Halo Tunes, Bearman 98 and Gutter Nerds from Twitter. If we missed you this week, we apologize. We'll get you guys next time. And then for special shout outs, we have, of course, Callie K. We hope you're doing well. We love you. Mm. Chasing Lux, Rad, Educated Black Siblings. I think we've settled the beef, you know, beets and cookies, dance off. I don't know. I but, like cookies. Um, but yeah, special shout out to them because they've been so supportive of us mm-hmm. and they've talked about some really awesome topics. I love their most recent topic concerning Black History Month and Black culture and especially talking about Black Panther and how that is to us in terms of representation and stuff. So God, shout yeah. out to y'all for being awesome. And they invent their theme songs on the fly and they come up with something new every time and I love it. So That is awesome. <laughs> so uh, Tiff, who's your PYT for this week? Pretty, brown, and nerdy. These three ladies are actually from the Dallas area. They are nerds like us, except they do mostly pop culture stuff. The latest thing that really drew my eye is just their reactions to the Black Panther trailer, like seeing them get emotional of that representation on screen, identifying with them being a nerd, but also seeing the representation. Please follow them because they are so good at everything that they do and talk about. And So yeah, Yay. they're so lovely. What about you? I picked X Mira Mira. She is a simmer. And she's responsible for the super huge melanin pack mod for people of color wanting to see better skin tones or representation in The Sims 4. So she's been doing this for a minute. And I love her playthroughs on YouTube. You know how we have the challenges and stuff. But she'll do backstories on her Sims and talk shit about them. She'll drag her own Sims and it's hilarious. She was doing the rags of riches. And so they started off poor and they were dirty. She's like, you need to go get in the bathroom because you smell like ball sack and hot dog water. Holy shit. Shit. And I was cracking the fuck up. It's just funny. There's so much drama with her Sims. I like the mods that she uses. As well. Yeah, if you ever need really awesome skin tones for your darker Sims, or if you just need to be entertained, go follow her because she's hilarious. She's on Twitch, so she does do Patreon stuff, but you can also follow her on YouTube as well. So, yay. Shit. Events. What do we got, Tiff? There is the Women of Wonder Con, which will be March 10th, 2018, at the Dallas Library. And I'm not sure even by the time this episode posts, but I know that they were asking for volunteers to help out. So if you still want to help and volunteer, please contact them and make sure that you just vocalize that you want to help out. Also, we are going to go to Alcon, which will be mm-hmm. March 15th through the 18th in Addison. Fan Expo Dallas, which will be April 6th through the 8th at the Convention Center. We also have TCC South Campus Anime Expo, which will be April 14th in Fort Worth. Let's Play, which will be July 27th through the 29th in Irving, Texas. And QuakeCon, August 9th through the 12th in Grapevine at the Gaylord Texan again. So I thought they did a really good job last year. I liked how it flowed. It was worth it. So our next episode episode will be March 11th and we're excited about this one because we're going to talk about Ghost Recon Future yes. Soldier. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and so this is one of our favorite co-op video games ever. So mm. it's going to be a fun adventure. So we hope you join us and make sure if you haven't listened to the previous episodes, go back and do that. But until next time, stay game-tastic yes. and yeah. game responsibly. <laughs> yes, all that stuff, yes. Bye, guys! Bye! Bye. Bye. Okay, I'll stop. It's not like I was choking myself there. No, I was just listening to your Sims. That's what <laughs> Okay, my Sims are not that freaky, okay? Look, they got needs, dude. Public needs, too.